So we are organizing a winter school on therapeutic ultrasound here at Lesouches, mainly for students. We want them to learn as much as we can during one week about ultrasound, therapeutic ultrasound in general, focused ultrasound. And we do it here because it's uh, first it's a lovely place, but it's also a remote place so everyone is just staying together and they're having scientific discussions during lectures, but also during lunches, dinner. We all stay together for one week. It's completely, a completely different atmosphere as compared to uh, conventional conferences, where we give 10 minutes talk and we have many talks in the sessions and we don't have much time to discuss. So here we take some time to have further discussions about how to use focused ultrasound, um, and all the problems the students might have during their PhD, uh, they can discuss with world experts. And usually in conferences, they would not even dare to come and talk to them. So they get to know each other. And then, so the, the students get to know each other and they also get to know better the lecturers. And then one, when they meet further on, on, on conferences, they come and talk much more easily than before. It's even more exciting when we discuss with patients that have been treated with focused ultrasound. But here we are helping students learning about focused ultrasound and developing new techniques. So those students, they are the future of therapeutic ultrasound. So we're doing our best so that they will advance the field once they go back to their lab. Back in the 19th century, uh, Pierre and Jacques Curie discovered piezoelectricity. Piezoelectricity is what enables us to generate ultrasound. Uh, so they discovered that by squeezing crystals, you can generate a voltage. So you can receive ultrasound. And by applying a voltage, you squeeze crystals. So you can generate ultrasound. So they discovered how to change the size of crystals and their student, Paul Langevin had the idea, actually, to use those crystals to generate ultrasound. What is fantastic is that you, you just see the organ through MR or ultrasound, so you have those very fine imaging, and you select the target, you tell the ultrasound where to aim at, and you can focus ultrasound exactly at that same location and induce a broad range of bioeffects at that location. So that is completely non-invasive. You see what you're doing. You can guide the treatment with uh, any imaging modalities, but you can also monitor the treatment. You can control the temperature. You can control the effects that you're having. And this is done in real time. So you can check that what, what you're doing is what you in intended to do. So depending on the ultrasound parameters, you can increase the temperature and ablate tissues, or you can favor mechanical effects. So you can dissolve blood clots, for example. You can achieve drug delivery thanks to mechanical effects and helping drugs to penetrate and, and go into the tumors. And this is what is fantastic about ultrasound. You just fine tune the, uh, the sequence and you change the effect. Some teams are developing very complex devices with thousands of elements and MR guidance and, and you can develop very complex things to be as precise as possible and target the brain, that is the most challenging um, organ to, uh, to target with ultrasound. But you can also develop very simple devices with a, a team of a few people involved and have your own generator and a small ultrasound. If you're clever enough, you can revolutionize your specialty. For example, for glaucoma treatment, then if you end up with a very simple idea of just putting the, the, the ultrasound just in contact with the eye, no imaging, just a precise mechanical positioning, then you end up with a very cheap device, very efficient. And this is what the company I Take Care has been developing. And that's wonderful because just from one ID, 
need some money, but you can go all the way to a clinical applications with a, um, only um, just a bright idea, actually. There are lots of barriers, uh, and I think it's, it's quite easy to, uh, to convince patients. Usually they are very enthusiastic about focused ultrasound. As soon as we explain, this is a non-invasive technology, it's uh, image-guided, very precise, uh, so, so they, they, they want it. But it's much harder to convince physicians to change the way they take care of patients. And even if it's a better way, and if we have a better outcome, it changes the way they, they used to take care of them. And, and so it takes time to, to convince and then to, for them to get experience and, and skilled and use the technique in the right way. Uh, and then once we achieve this, then I think the technique will become widespread. First thing is, is to prove safety. And, and all the, the phase one trials are always about safety first. And then we have to prove also the efficacy that's to be safer than other techniques, but also more efficient. Ultrasound guided therapies are, are cheaper and, and they will get cheaper and cheaper and, and, and moreover they will get lighter and lighter and uh, hopefully handheld. Uh, but also there is room, I guess, for MR to decrease the cost. Uh, we should be aware of that and there are, for example, researches with ultra low field MR and they claim they can build very low cost MR. So currently the image quality is, is not as good as conventional MR, but they could also make tremendous progress and, and we should have a close look to that because once this is available, we should not miss this opportunity to have low cost MR guided ultrasound. Of course, ultrasound is available and, and we need to develop new techniques with ultrasound, smaller, lighter, less expensive, but both should be studied.